Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to the parish of St. James. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the parish of St. James. We are going to begin shortly, but at this time I would just ask everyone to take out your cell phones and put it in silent mode. We had uh, two cell phones go off at the 11. And we will begin shortly. Thank you.
Once again, good afternoon and welcome to the parish of St. James. On behalf of our pastor, Father Robert Kuznick, our associate pastor, Father Bob Scheckenbach, Welcome to St. James and a special welcome to our first communicants and families. And as I had mentioned before, please just take a moment to take out your phones and put them in silent mode. When our children are receiving the first Holy, Communion, first Holy Eucharist for the first time, we ask that everyone remain seated in quiet prayer. And during our liturgy, I invite everyone to sing all the hymns throughout the Mass. And at this time, please join in our gathering hymn, Sing a New Song, Please Rise. your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing alleluia. Shout with gladness, dance for joy, O come before the Lord, and play for God on glad tambourines, and let your trumpet sound. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We gather here this afternoon to pray together so that our prayer here with each other can nourish us. And that's what this celebration is all about. It's about God nourishing us. It's about God's desire that we know God wants to be within us. God becomes food for us, for our bodies and our spirits. So we celebrate the coming to the table for the first time of these children with the hope that it's the first of many times that they learn what it means to belong to us at this table and that they are nourished by God's life by coming to pray here with us. So in that spirit, let us pray. And we begin as we always do by recalling that great capacity we have for God in us but we always start this prayer by acknowledging that there are obstacles that get in the way of, of that presence of God, and we ask God to remove them. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, you call us to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord you feed us with your life. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord, you build us into your body. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Thank you. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of your Son's life and passion, grant us so to revere this sacred mystery, these mysteries of your Son's body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your life. For, you, for he lives and reigns with you, God the Father, in the unity of the Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our Liturgy of the Word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and their possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodness of the Lord. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup. After supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowds, meanwhile, learned of this and followed him. Jesus received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd, so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place. He said, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men alone numbered 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and was satisfied. When the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, looking up in prayer, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. When the leftovers were gathered, they filled twelve wicker baskets. So growing up, it was important that we were American. 
and that's still important, but what I mean by it is we didn't have a strong sense of our nationality. I had a vague sense that my dad's family was German and came from Germany, and my mom's family mostly German with some Irish. It wasn't until I was an adult that I found out we had some Italian. Growing up, I had friends, particularly in the neighborhood, that were Italian and were Italian families. And then as the years went on, I had more and more contact with very traditional Italian-American families and got to experience and begin to understand these gigantic meals that you guys have. You know what I'm talking about. Grandma is like 120, right? Grandma's ancient. And grandma's going to have everybody over for dinner. And, and does she start cooking that day? They're coming over on Sunday, she's going to start cooking on Sunday? No, she's been cooking since the previous Sunday. Does she call people up and get them to shop for her? No. She does all the shopping. She does all the preparation. She starts cooking a week before, three days before. She's in full-blown kitchen mode. She's ancient. And, and she's like a ninja in the kitchen with knives and appliances, and she's making all of this food. Ultimately, there might be 35, 40 people over for dinner. Now, is she going to make enough food for 35 or 40 people? No, of course not. She's going to make enough food for 80 people. Because if you're stuffed to the point of where you're going to explode and you can't eat another, another morsel, and there's no more food left, that's a failure. That took me a long time to figure out. I don't get that. I'm thinking, well, I'm full and I can't eat anymore. Well, then we're good. No, not enough. So she cooks and she cooks and she's talking to everyone. Everyone is invited. Everyone is invited. Doesn't matter how far away you are, it doesn't matter how estranged you are, it doesn't matter what kind of drama there's been in the family, they're all invited, everybody, every time she has one of these meals. Now, some of them can't make it for different reasons, some of them don't see the point of it, so they just choose to never come, but they're always invited, always, always, always invited. And it takes days while she's cooking for those invitations to go out, word of mouth. For most of them, it's a pretty exciting invitation. Hey, she's having one of those dinners. Oh, awesome. Takes them days to, to recover from the dinner. And so she prepares and she cooks. Finally, the day arrives. People start to show up. They come in the morning. They're there during the day. She's in the final stages of cooking every possible type of food that is Italian that you can imagine. And of course, when the other women in the family get to the house, they try to help, right? Does she let them? No, absolutely not. And while she's preparing, even while she was shopping, while she's preparing, while she's cooking, while she's doing the initial chopping, while she's dealing with the oven and the frying pans and all of it, all she's thinking about is her family. How much she loves them, how much she is a part of them. She even has a sense that she created them. She's the matriarch. She created all of them. When they all pile into the house and it's this whole giant group, she made all of them. She knows them. She wants them to understand how much she's a part of them. Genetically, she's a part of them. Her, 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 her blood is in them. She's a part of not only their life and their family, she's a part of them, even physically. And she wants them to know that. That's, that's in her heart while she's doing all the work. And as ancient as she is, does she let anyone help her? No, because that's her focus. It's, it's you. It's her family. And the day goes on, and she's cooking, and she's starting to put things out. 
and there's a big giant table, but does everybody fit at that table? No. So what happens? Well, the washing machine gets a piece of plywood put on it. That's a table. When I first saw that, I, I could not, I, I had to like, go in another room and laugh. Like not being brought up that way. The pool table is a table. Snack tables, card tables. In one corner of the room, there'd be two old Italian guys with like a two by four. And, they, and that's a table. With, they have chairs in front of it. And so everybody has a place to be. And everybody's packed in the house. And finally, 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 she puts all the food out. She's slapping everybody's hands to not touch anything, not eat anything. They're all trying to come in and dip bread in the sauce. Smack, smack. And she finally gets them all gathered around and she can see everybody. And she's got all the food out. And she's looking at her family. She knows all of them. She wants them to know how much she loves them, how much she's a part of them, how much she's in them. She looks at each individual face. She remembers when, when that family lost the baby. She remembers when she graduated law school. She remembers when, when this one graduated preschool. She knows all their stories. She's been a part of most of their triumphs and their tragedies. And she's looking at them, and all of that is in her heart. And she wants them to know how much she wants to feed them, how much she wants to love them, how much she's inside of them, how much she's a part of them. And she's looking out and seeing their whole story, all of their stories, everything about them. And this goes on for a few minutes, and they know. They're sitting there just letting her look at them because they know what she's doing. And her whole being, her whole heart is just filled up and, and, and bursting with this desire for them to know how much she cares for them and how much she's a part of them. What does she say? Does she give a big giant speech like I just did? Thank God, no. Food would be cold. She looks out onto that family with her heart bursting with a desire for them to know how much she is in them and cares for them and wants to feed them and nourish them. And what does she say? She says, manja. That's what she says. Eat. Eat. That's all she says. And they get it. That's what today's about. God looking at his family. God knowing our stories. God wanting us to understand that we really are his children. That God is, is physically in us. God, God is a part of us. God looks at each one of us, each one of you, and knows your story and wants to feed you and take care of you and wants you to be able to experience that. And that's what happens here at the table. And so when God gets to that point in history where he wants his little babies to know how much he's in them and how much he loves them, it's Jesus speaking as God who says what? Does he give a big long speech? No, thank God. He says eat. Take and eat. This is my body. Taking the five loaves and two fish, saying the blessing. He broke them, gave them. They all ate and were satisfied. God wants us to know that he's the source of, of our nourishment. But, but we're not always going to be able to experience that out there. We can, but we have this here, particularly on Sundays, so that we can be reminded. Just like once in a while when they went to Grandma's house, they might not have been thinking about it all the time, but on those Sundays when they were invited in, and they were all invited. They were reminded how much she is a part of their lives and how much she is within them and what she means to them. And that's exactly why we come here to pray. So that we can be reminded that God looks at us with that same love and simply says, take and eat. This is my body. 
I want this for you. And, and that's what we celebrate today. So when you think of not only today, but every Sunday when we pray like this, try to imagine God looking at you as that loving grandma would and, and welling up with a desire of love, a desire for you to know how much God is within you. And, and all God simply says is eat. I invite you to please stand so that together we can offer our prayers and petitions in our prayer of the faithful. With faith, we offer these prayers to God as we celebrate the Eucharist for the first time with our families here today. Our response will be, Lord, receive our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Barrys, and all the priests who model Jesus by their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord receive our, our prayer. For all the boys and girls in the world who will be receiving Jesus for the first time this year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For our parents and teachers who have prepared us for this great day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For the poor and homeless children of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick and suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For all who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. Gracious God, accept these prayers and petitions that with great faith, hope, and love we offer you today. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare for our Liturgy of the Eucharist. I invite you to sing, I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart. Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness shine on my path and show of the city 
of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Please stand, pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Grant your church, Lord, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we present here. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For at the Last Supper with his disciples, Jesus establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of his life, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make us holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of love. And so we approach this table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace we may pass over to the heavenly realities that are foreshadowed here. Therefore all creatures sing a new song and we with the hosts of your kingdom cry out without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks you have held us up to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, for the people of God and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the life of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her son, with the blessed Apostles, with St. James, and with all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be called heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Please stand and let us pray. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Please kneel.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be saved. Just as a reminder, that um, as the children receive their first Holy Communion, to please remain seated and in quiet prayer. And then once the children are done receiving, uh, the rest of the congregation will be able to receive. But again, please in quiet prayer. Thank you.
Those who were in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. We who live, we who die, are grateful for this gift. Thankful for God's love.
Please stand and let us pray. Grant, Lord, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed now by our reception of your Son's body. For he lives and reigns as our Lord and brother forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of Father Robert, our pastor, and uh, Louise, our Director of Religious Education and all of our catechists, I'd like to thank and congratulate all of you for being here. And I'd like to thank them. I'd like to thank our religious education, our catechists, Joan Marie, Louise. I'd like to thank Lee, our usher. I'd like to thank all of the music ministry who, who makes this prayer so uh, much more vibrant and, and inspiring. Uh, so congratulations to all of our children being invited for the first time to the table. And, and an invitation to come back now that you've come. No one can ever take that away from you. The other one we had this morning, I preached about Thanksgiving and how we used to have the kids' table. And once you went from the kids' table to the big table, you never went back. And now you've been invited to the big table. In fact, when I was little, we, we used to go to church the next day in our outfits. In fact, I have this odd memory of being in my first communion outfit for like three weeks. Like they made me stay in it. I had like mud on it. They made me play in it. I had to wear it all the time. So you don't have to do that. But you can come back. And if you want to come back all dressed up for a couple of weeks, you can do that too. But know that now this is the place that you belong and, and hopefully your families can help you out with that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. to the sun above melt the clouds of sin and sadness drive the dark of doubt away giver of immortal gladness fill us with the light of day all your works with joy surround you earth and heaven reflect your rays stars and Center of unbroken praise, field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, sound their praise eternally. You are giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. God our Father, Christ our brother, let your light upon us shine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy.